But this is just one of those games that leaves you pulling your bloody hair out. Into the black hole. Sing for my soul. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Sunshine on Life. I hope you're still enjoying the series. If you are, drop a like. That'll be awesome. Uh, last episode was kind of action-packed. Less so on the pitch, more so in terms of the off-the-pitch stuff. Uh, a lot of changes, to be honest. Like, with the sale of Neil Cross bringing in Bradley Davidson and Regan Booty, of all people. Um, yeah, like, I, I realise that Regan Booty is probably a bit of a, a negligent signing in some ways. Some will to like Joe Bryan, but sometimes you just have to do it for nostalgia reasons, you know? And I am looking at a few other players. I found a left back from uh, St Mirren, who's only 19, and he looks absolutely sensational. And there's a Rangers uh, midfielder too that I might look to bring in. So you might see a few more new faces before the end of this transfer window, as I'm actually going to try and spend a little bit of this money now, because I'm concerned that maybe next season things might not go so well and we might lose some key players in the summer. Um, and I want to try and really make a push for the playoffs this season, because why the hell not at this point? After scoring his hat-trick uh, against Luton Town, Wim Billington received a congratulatory phone call from his family. Particularly excited were his brother, Draw Billington, and his sister, Last Minute Goal Billington. There you go. Nine out of ten Wim Billingtons think you should have just taken the seven millions. Well, there you go. We got an 8.5 million with a 50% of next sale fee. That's so much better, really, when you look at it. Because that was the seven, point, the 7 million was the release clause. There was no clauses. We could get over 10 million potentially with this deal. Is it too early to say that Wim Billington is my favourite player from all of your saves? That's a real uh, leap, but I'm interested. It's not just his raw ability that's amazing. He's got a fantastic story to go with it. And it's not just the numbers that he puts up. It's his style as well. He has such a versatility, variety, and intelligence in his play. It almost reminds me of a Thomas Muller or Berbatov. Excited to see how much further he can go. That is high praise. I mean, he's had half a season in the championship. And we're comparing him to Berbatov and Thomas Muller. But imagine if he does continue to develop. By the way, he is... Sh it's just the arrows are like bloody... Yeah, it's great. Great to great to see. And he's really improving in the weaknesses in his game, too, that I highlighted at the start of the year. And if he could really work on that stuff, they might have we may have well have a hell of a player here. And it's encouraging. Uh, so today, it's us versus Brentford. Blackhaven are away at Swansea today. They could go into the top two with a victory because Derby bottled it a little bit. So if Blackhaven point would take them second in the championship, and they are looking dynamic. And they haven't even done any January signings yet, which is scary. Tell a lie, they've signed uh, Daniel Podence from Crystal Palace. Let's go. Right, so we should have my man Billy back. Um, no, I wouldn't want to fancy him there. Um, I think we're going to go with Billington there. Sullivan needs a rest, basically. And I think we do have a slight break after the next game, so I may well give it to him after this game. Uh, but, but I wonder why they prefer Booty there. I mean, he is very good. But I feel like Idris doesn't get enough credit, and we're going to bring Idris in for today's game. Nelson does need a rest, though, as Dave Morton will come in. Also going to bring back in Knight and Parry, the standard partnership. And I prefer Max McCoy to Ben Furman this season. But the sooner we get back Russell Griggs, the better, because he is so important to us. Okay, so fairly straightforward for Brentford. Um, a lot of this shape at this level. We know that anyway. Just going to go and do our best. Grab a win. You never know what we can do. Because I'd be lying if I said it hasn't fallen off slightly. Uh, he scored the one goal against Villa, which was really good. And he scored a penalty lately. He doesn't. We haven't seen that much out of him since the Luton game. It's almost like because the pressure's off of having... Um, crossy behind him he may have been starting to slack a little bit but it might just be inconsistency we will see maybe he can redeem himself today but at the end of the day even if he only goes on and scores like 25 league goals this year that is insane for a guy in his first full season as a senior pro basically um to do something like that we'll just see what he's got like when it comes down to it with crossy we took a player in for free and then built him into a seven million pound transfer billington oh wow oh we can still get it back here Sullivan does, and Birch McNaughton, a great save at the back post there. We did really well on the break. No possession at all here so far, but we've been getting less of that lately, and it's not really seemed to be bothering us. I think Derby had 60% possession when they lost 7-1 uh, to us, and Kai Knight has given us the lead. Massive goal. Kind of helps out Blackhaven too, which is a bit of a sad time, um, but what can you do? Kai Knight, he hasn't scored for a while. He's back in the goals today. Fran Sullivan, another assist for him. I think he's up to about 15 in all comps again this season. What a man. We're actually doing pretty well so far. Birch McNaught's ball. Morton with the header, and now it's 2 0. Whitport 2, Brentford 0. Dave Morton's got his fourth goal of the season. Didn't get as many last year due to his injuries, but he's really been decent this year, considering that he's barely been starting because of Simon Nelson. But he's done well when he's coming to the team. Birch McNaught with yet another assist. Lovely left footed ball across. Nobody marks Dave Morton. And we're 2 0 up against Brentford now. Very good. It's important to remember that Brentford are also 18th in the form standings as Billington goes through, and it's, sh it's saved. That's one of his sort of his kind of chances, but unfortunately, not that time. You got a bit too over-exuberant that time. Connolly, great tackle from McCoy again. McCoy has been... I feel like McCoy is better in the championship than he was in League One. Like, he's legitimately been very dependable, constantly putting tackles in. Oh, what about that? And I'd go, oh, what a save from Dickin. That is tremendous work. Um, Hey, maybe we won't... Maybe we're not missing Russell Griggs quite as much. He's putting some really good performances so far, Sam Dickin. 
Again, finding Morton with a lovely ball over the top. And Billington this time does skin the defender. He's going to get the shot away. Or will he square it? No, he goes for goal again. He's at least hitting the target with some shots. And he's continuing to show that agility. That's the key thing for me. And it's been cleared into the path of Sullivan. He's got two players on him and he's got past both of them. He's going to get the shot away from here. It's a bit of a tight angle for Fran Sullivan and another big stop by the goalkeeper. Nevit. Idris. Billington's into the space now. Can he bring it down? Skips past the defender. Loads of space will win Billington. And it's another shot saved. Oh, he's going through a bit of a bit of a patchy moment here, I think. That's 2-0 to Blackhaven. I mean, they're doing it, to be fair to them. Davis and Zamborek. Going to get Davis on for a little bit. Play him up in the pressing forward. Not the pressing forward role. Uh, actually, yes, in the pressing forward role as Brentford grab a goal back. Ben Knight. That's frustrating. Um, that's what happens when you don't take your chances. Things get too tight like that. Just a very good finish from him, really. Um, he's managed to just nick that in off the post. On the sort of, He's backpedalling and he's found a very... That's kind of similar to one that uh, when Billington scored earlier this season. Barlow dinks one in. Good. Clearance time. Hayes. Looks long, but we might be able to get to the rebound if he heads it, which he doesn't. But there's still a chance for us now. Hayes. Players through the middle. Finds Davidson. Oh, nice nice little touch to bring that out the air, though. Barlow being pressed heavily and Dave Morton flying in there. Billington makes the run behind. They're never going to catch him. They're probably going to hit the block on the shot. Oh, no. <laughs> I could have whizzed in the top corner. And Swansea have equalised against Blackhaven. Zlat Zlatin Genchev scores a late one to deny Blackhaven a place in... Well, actually, not even to deny them. They're still going to be in the top two, uh, but they've denied a an extension to that lead. It's not what they would have wanted. There we go. Whitport 2, Brentford 1. Big result against this team directly above us in the league. Uh, we still trail them massively because we've conceded a lot of goals. But we're two points into the playoffs now. Looking pretty good. The Obviously, the automatics are well out of range, but Blackhaven still have a chance, amazingly. Right, game's off camera. Hopefully, Billington can find a goal in there. Right then back um frustrating times away at stoke city um yeah soft goals one of these annoying ones unfortunately and you know they always go in and they did again basically one nil thankfully though we did manage to get our act together a little bit in this one birch mcnaught flying down the right hand side taking it on all comers whips across sullivan with an easy finish another goal for him lovely stuff unfortunately it kind of just went a bit wrong from there on uh really he had chances didn't take them stoke were able to then find themselves a second goal here as the ball comes back near post Dickon can get nowhere near it. 2-1. And then just before half-time, things got even worse for us, unfortunately. Diallo gets the ball here and just drops it on the side for Yaskalain. And it's 3-1 to Stoke then. We had our chances and just didn't take them. We got a red card as well for Simon Nelson, which really did not help. But this is just one of those games that leaves you pulling your bloody hair out. Like, this is crazy. Look at the stats for this match. And I just don't understand how we didn't win this one. Birch from gets the ball out wide, whips it across. Sullivan, 1-0, 13 minutes, off to a flyer. Then Regan Booty delivering the ball out from the back. There was Billington. Leaves the defender underneath it. Smashing. On he comes. Lovely, comfortable finish. 2-0 up. Cruising. Chances for days. But unfortunately, uh, on 34 minutes, Huddersfield, yeah. Uh, first actual opportunity of the game. Ball around the side. Incredible tight angle from Reeves. How is he scoring from there? Then we gave away a penalty. Uh, and suddenly, before halftime, it was back to 2-2. And I'm like, what's happened here? And then, just after halftime, indirect free kick. And more chaos. It's 3-2 to Huddersfield. Then they get a red card. We create 11 chances on the night and still don't manage to score another goal in this game. Um, Just, I have no words. At least Billington managed to grab himself a goal and play really, really well. But it's just a, a mad game. Uh, Regan Boosie again was spectacular, but it doesn't matter when you just have one of those games where you cannot seem to... We conceded every opportunity they got, basically, and only managed to score two, which usually is enough, but Christ on a bike. That was 18 chances we had in two matches and we lost both of them. And I really do think it's because Dickens in goal. And there's nothing we can do about it at the moment. Griggs should be back for today, though, which is a big deal. Now, I've made a signing. You might even notice him here. I said I saw a guy who was at St. Mirren. This is Ross Harris. I had to take a massive risk. We hadn't got him fully scouted, but he looked terrific. Even like the minimum of what I could see out of him. I thought this guy could be really, really something for us. So I took the bid uh, when Rangers came in. I was like, right, we need to try and make this deal happen. So Rangers came with a bid. Eventually, uh, we managed to get the deal done. 250,000 up front, rising to 600k over three years. But I think it was worth it for this guy. Now, he is an actual wingback, so we're going to have to train him further back, get him working on a few little things. Uh, there's some things I definitely think he needs to have a little look at. For example, his positioning is a bit poor. Uh, marking tap marking is not too bad. Could get definitely get that improved, and he will hopefully get better. But he's got excellent technicals in terms of what we want going forward. So crossing, dribbling, first touch, passing sensational, work rate, technique. He's six foot two, which is always nice for a bit of aerial presence. Great jumping reach to go with it. 
But as for the league, we're down to eighth place now with one win in five and three defeats on the cards in there. We just don't look quite as good as the teams around us often. Uh, still only two points out, though, so that's fair. And Burnley, we do have a game in hand on as well. Blackhaven have snuck back into the automatic spots now at the expense of Fulham, um, despite losing a few or well, dropping some points here and there. Billington's still top scorer. We're still plugging away. Blackhaven, I don't know if they're ever, I don't know if they're actually going to do it because they have lost Lewis Macy to Leeds. Uh, they sold him for £18 million, pounds, and I think he's been pretty damn important for them this season. However, they have gone nuts. They may have lost him and Danny Smith and David Ease as well, actually, on loan. But look at this. So Albie Morgan from Charlton, 2.8 million. Chris Daly on loan from Arsenal, a young Belgian. Dan Happ from Rotherham, 10 million quid. Batista Ocoli uh, on loan as well from Leeds. Diego Leita, who's five rising to six million pounds. Steven Sessegnon they've brought in from Burnley for 3.3 million. And lastly, a loan deal for Alan uh, Udokorniero. Udokorniero? Yes, they've got a lot of players. So far this season, they've spent 36 million. It looks like because they're up there, they've just kind of gone, you know what? Balls to the wall. Let's try and push for promotion right now. And I think they might be in for real trouble if they don't win promotion this year now that they've taken that kind of outlay. But we'll see, I suppose. As for us, there's one other deal going on. Uh, that is that John Richardson's gone out and loaned to Dundalk for the rest of the season uh, just to get him some game time. Now that Regan Booty's here, he's been pushed further down the order. So I did want to give him a chance. And that's going to cost us a lot. So, uh, massive shift to Rue. Nelson's back in the team. Nevitt, I mean, I I'm going to start. I'm going to put Ross Harris back in. He he's still going to learn that role, of course. But he's done well so far. I trust Booty over Max McCoy. And I trust Parry and Knight. Like, they've done the job for us this season, to be fair. But the key thing for me is Russell Griggs is back. Because it's not like Dickon was back. He did make some top stops, don't get me wrong. But he let in too many soft goals. And that was our problem in the past. And if we are intended to fight for this playoff spot, we've got to start the fight now. Interested to see how Blackhaven's new signings come in and whether they do actually miss Lewis Macy and his £18 million move to Leeds. Lovely ball from Booty. Chan in space. Can he pull it back for someone? He's all the way through. Billington and Nelson gets the shot away. Nice little knockdown, though. Billington. Oh, lovely work from Simon Nelson again. He's probably going to get the shot away this time. Does get the shot away again. Good start from us, though. I want to see how Harris does against... I just want to... Oh, no, Chan! Terrible defense. Oh, dearie me. Wow, that's just a comedy of errors from Chan there. First, he lets it go over his head. Then he recovers and then goes, you know what? I think we'll foul the guy. Are we about to get a third consecutive defeat now? Lundstrom. Griggs is there and there's nothing Griggsy can do about that. And it's 1-0 to Nottingham Forest. And I just feels like we actually genuinely having a challenge in those playoffs might have been a bridge too far for us this season as we have just started to slip off a little bit. The consistency in the strikers... Gets out wide, back for Nelson, Sullivan, and Billington and Sullivan. Oh, wow. I mean, I don't know. Lately, it just feels like less about the actual finishing quality, just that the goalkeepers we've been coming up against have been pulling off save after save lately. With the right amount of pressure, we could get a breakaway here. We just could win it off them, just get a little toe in or something. There we go, Sullivan does the job. Defender's going to have to come across to cover him. He's got Billington into space, finds Win Billington. Yes! Forrest won, Whitport won. That is classic Winnie. Oh, and Fran Sullivan does brilliantly there. That is pressing forward in its quintessential art there. He just kept on pushing. Fonseca gets caught in possession, and you know what was going to happen. The defender has to come across to cover, and Win Billington, the composure here, just to slot this home. He has gained two composure this season, up to 10. He is on it. Yes, Win. Well, half time, and I think we've done all right, really. If it wasn't for that slight mistake from Chan, I really do want to turn this into a victory, though, just to keep us in contention slightly. It's not the end of the world if we don't, but, like, it'd be nice to just stay involved a little bit closer. And Brentford now losing at home to Ipswich, but they have got to go back. And Billington once again sells the defender. He's done this so many times lately, and Billington again, he can't get the ball in the back of the net. He's so good at, like, rolling the defender. I don't know how he does that. It must be the agility and the balance he's got. But he just lets the defender sort of go past him and he just runs. He's brilliant at doing that. He did that against Huddersfield. He's done it so many times already this season. And Blackhaven losing at home to Blackburn. That's a big result for them. It doesn't seem their squad's settling in that well. They've just started to bottle it at the wrong moment. Billington again rolls the defender. Can he finish it this time? And he does. That is terrific from him. Um... That seems to be like his special move. I don't think I've ever seen a footballer that has like a special move before. When you press the right button combination, he just seems to have this wonderful ability to just... The defender's got the, the advantage there, and he just somehow gets through there. Three people around him, keeps his composure, near post, and this is the win Billington that could be a Whitport legend one day. Whitport win, they'll call him. That's a good ball, actually, for Burrows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to call this one a exasperated sip. I think we'll go with that. Oh dear, couldn't keep their nerve, could they? Oh, we're on just one of those spells. We're, the creativity hasn't changed. We're still creating chance after chance after chance in games, but we're just letting in soft goals. We'll whip through. 
Here we go. Right, now Booty's got to find the right ball. That's not bad for Sullivan. And Billington's pulling away. Sullivan's going to shoot, of course, because it's a tight angle. And he... Oh, he scored! Frank Sullivan grabs the goal anyway. Regan Booty with the assist. And we've scored a late one here at the City Ground to hopefully see us over the line. 15th of the season as well for Franzi Sullivan. He's had a pretty good year this season. He might be able to get to 20 and 20 again this season. Just takes the defender on, showing that extra pace. Bad goalkeeping from Maguire. And it trickles over the line. Come on. And Booty in acres of space. Sullivan round the side for Billington. He's through again. He's going to... Oh, what a lovely ball. <laughs> what a lovely little pass. Uh, that was like a no-look ball there from Wim Billington. It's looking like a man of the match performance as well from Wim Billington. That's the kind of performance we need from our two strikers today. They've done the job. Defensively, still a bit suspect in places. Penalty was Chan's fault and didn't do a great job elsewhere. But the, the strikers and Regan Booty have led us through that match to victory. And they do keep us just in touch with the playoffs. Only a point behind, obviously, worse goal difference than everybody else. Black have scored a lot of goals this season too. Wow. So that's at least a bright spark after those two defeats that we've had in there. Next episode, we're going to start off our home against Rotherham. And of course... We've got the televised game at Blundell Park against Black Heavenly United. They're actually televising our derby. That's sick. So, yes, if you've enjoyed this episode, I hope you have. In spite of the defeats, drop a like. That'll be superb. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'll be awesome as well. And I'll see you guys in the next episode for the Rotherham game and the derby. That's massive. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your gun. Cappy Barrett.